Hey there folks, Rel here. In the background you'll see some more or less random gameplay from Planetside 2, but I want to talk about the concept of nerfing fun, catering to casuals, and generally playing it safe. This isn't quite a thoughts on better gaming episode since we're talking specifically about Planetside 2, but I figured it'd be worth sharing. A common trend in both the Planetside 2 forums and the subreddit is talking about nerfing fun, and basically that's just taking fun and quirky elements out of the game for the sake of balance. Similarly, you see these same sorts of arguments when it comes to dumbing the game down or removing skill. People see that something they enjoy is being taken out of the game and are sad or angry to see it go. Both nerfing fun and removing skill sometimes go hand in hand, and you really have to ask yourself if the changes were really necessary to begin with. Looking back at some examples, and about as many of you will remember these changes as those of you who do not, but a long while back, vehicles could fall from any height and they would never explode, provided that they landed on their wheels. This is no longer the case. In fact, it actually indirectly nerfed turbo flashes and to a lesser degree, turbo harassers, because you're punished with a flaming exploding death if you fly too far without making contact with the ground. And it doesn't even have to be falling from a certain height. It can literally be, your vehicle has not touched the ground recently, therefore you deserve to explode. Now was that change for the better? If you examine the impacts, you can no longer drive your Sunderer directly off of places like, uh, like the bridge at J908 impact site, and then live. Now, tell me why something like this is anything more than just a hilarious and inventive use of game mechanics. For the sake of realism, yes, hurtling 12 stories down and landing safely on your wheels may not be something that is intended, but neither is driving your lightning or your harasser down the canyon as it flips 15 times only to let the driver walk away unscathed. Or what about long, long ago when the Flash's turbo was actually nerfed? I think a lot of you will actually remember this. It was nerfed to the point where it would not allow a Flash unit to sail through the air. The backlash against this change was so great that it was quickly reverted to its original state, or pretty dang close. The reasoning offered up for the change was, if I recall correctly, that the turbo allowed the flash to reach places it was not intended to reach. Now, in what world would a small, single-man vehicle, and this was back before they added the rumble seat, that is extremely fragile, with little to no valid offensive capabilities, be a threat to the overall balance or greater good of the game? It wouldn't. Ever. Unless you organized a platoon of, say, you know, 48 of the things, and you turbo jumped up to an inaccessible location, and then you camped it with bursters and annihilators and whatever else, which not only would be an amazing and inspiring sight to behold, but is also a completely valid strategy, much more easily pulled off with a handful of galaxies. Other examples included things like the old jumping mechanics, which would allow you to jump higher while running up inclines. Uh, mounting Sunderers or Prowlers to the top of galaxies, which I hear is still doable, but is much harder to pull off. Or the acceleration that Drifter Jump Jets used to provide while rounding corners. Or, or, most recently, removing the ability to aim down sights while airborne. All of these things, all of them, are arguably additional layers of both skill and fun that are being stripped away from the game as it draws closer and closer to what's proper and intended. Quirks are what make games so much fun to rally behind. They boost morale and they allow us to make enjoyable videos. It's why people still try to get mag riders into interesting places. It's why we try to rendezouk enemy aircraft. Heck, it's why both the rendezouk and even the only in Battlefield 3 ad campaign was even a thing in the first place. Imagine if the skiing glitch from the original tribes had been removed, you know, fixed, instead of expanded upon and built into the core of the game like it is now and forever. And for those of you who don't know, skiing was in fact a jumping glitch in the original game. It was not intended. Now do you think that tribes would have spawned such an amazing series of extremely popular games? The answer is pretty obvious. It's a resounding no. No, it would not have. When some of these quirks, these layers, get removed from the game, it's hopefully done with the greater player base in mind. For example, when you had uh, 8080 spam, that was removed because it was causing characters to warp around. That's why they added the momentum changes. When the incline-based jumping mechanics were removed, it was because we can circumvent barriers that we weren't meant to circumvent, like being able to, uh, to climb up towers and cliffs and walls. But where do you draw the line? Recently, aiming down sights while jumping or flying has been disabled. It forces you to hipfire. 
The intention I see behind this, if I just had to guess, is to both punish players who jump around corners while aiming down sights because it instantly gives them back all their accuracy as soon as they land, as well as those players who jump corners with rocket launcher primaries. With this change, it's going to force you to rescope after hitting the ground, which is an indirect nerf to night vision scopes as well as high powered scopes, thanks to that scope stutter that's been in the game for as long as anyone can remember. And it also removes the possibility of drifter jump jets using smoke and night vision and then dropping C4. And that is a valid playstyle and valid strategy. And on top of the recent laser sight changes, it's a direct nerf to any player who tries to regain some of that horrid cone of fire accuracy that exists while jump jetting around. Now keep in mind that jump jetting while firing your weapon, aiming down sights or otherwise, was never an effective way of killing anything. It was just fun. That said, was the change really necessary? Not just this one, but many of them. Quirky game mechanics are a boon to the community in at least two major ways. The first is morale and promotion. We love watching people using game mechanics in interesting ways. They make for the best videos. A long time ago there was a video of an outfit just using flash ATVs and launching them off of small boxes up into the air and trying to jump over or onto reavers and galaxies. You see videos of galaxies creating bridges, like floating lily pads, for mag riders to try and cross large chasms, sometimes falling to their death down below. Heck, it's even in the one simple question trailer that was posted by Planetside 2 back in November. That trailer uses footage of a few quirky things that we really can't do anymore and are becoming less and less inclined to even try. We love watching and creating these sorts of videos. They give us something to enjoy beyond what we normally experience in the game. The second and probably more important piece of the puzzle is that it gives the community something to learn and strive to do and or become. A while back, before Operation Make Game Faster, in the early stages of the ESF update, when Higby was talking about lowering the output of afterburners so that you couldn't pull off a reverse maneuver whenever you felt like it, the logic behind the nerf was that using the reverse maneuver is a necessity to be able to fly well, which I feel is completely true. Any novice pilot who does not know how to use the reverse maneuver is dead in the water. That said, one of the most legitimate counterpoints that I heard to that argument was that being able to use the reverse maneuver should be something that pilots, novice or otherwise, strive to learn. And I completely agree with that. The feedback against this was so strong that we still have our powerful afterburners, we still have that strong reverse maneuver, but now other methods are being implemented to aid novice pilots. And this is what needed to happen in the first place. Nerfing the afterburners, in my opinion, would have been a huge, easy step toward fixing a bigger problem, fixing that new pilot experience. But is it worth stripping away the hours spent by veteran players to master a certain skill? No, not in your life. There are other ways to help new pilots without invalidating the time and experience of the veteran ones. It will take more time, it'll take more commitment, it'll take more coding, but in the end, there's always a way, and it's usually worth it. The absolute strongest motivation I know of to play any game is the personal drive we have to become better at it. Some players want to, uh, they want to explore, they want to achieve, they want to be part of a social aspect. But every player, regardless of type, is going to grin when they finally learn how to land consistent headshots with their bolt-action sniper rifle from 200 meters away. In the end, I don't want Planetside 2 to keep doing these safe, sort of prim and proper changes. It makes the game less exciting, and if anything, the devs should be going in the opposite direction. Make the game crazy, make it amazing, and make it full of, why would you even think to do that? That doesn't even make sense. That's the feeling that I want. As much as I love this game, it pains me to see it slowly diluted like this, especially when features are added or removed that people never seem to have a problem with and even enjoyed in the first place. As a development team that is known to have an ear to the ground as far as responding and building on community feedback, some of these changes really confuse me. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and if you've been a long-standing player who can remember some of the really interesting mechanics that the game used to have but just aren't around anymore, leave that nostalgia in the comments section down below. Thanks very much, folks. We're all signing off.